So when I'm locked in with a certain user, I need to kind of identify what's the main folder for that user, right? I need some way to say when you're locked in with, with me right now, I need to get my root folder. So we need to go into Firebase and somehow start identifying specific folders, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and add a new field and that's going to be called root folder. Just keep it there for now, just an empty string. And then I'm going to go into folders to pick my root folder for this specific user. Because each user is going to have their own unique root folder. Now I'm picking this one because I know that has both subfolders and files. And then I'm pretty much just going in and adding that unique ID right here in the root folder. And there we go. Now we have root folder available. Now again, it's hard coded and there might be bugs because I need to also set this when I'm creating the user. But let's do that later. Let's not do that this lesson. Sweet. So now we have a root folder available. That pretty much means that when I have a locked in user like I have right now, I should be able to go and grab a specific main folder, the starting folder for everything. So what we're going to do this lesson is we're going to try and go and grab that folder. Now to do that we need to go into our albums list component and we need to go in and remove all this dummy data right here. I'm just going to keep one part of the data and that's just pushing the column right there because I'm going to use that in a second but the rest of it I'm going to remove that all that um, dummy data that we have used until now. Because now we want to actually go and get the real data. Now to do that I need two things. I need the user that's currently logged in and I also need to get um, the folder using the user's unique identifier, right? So let's go and do that. Now step one is to get use the user module and to use the folder, uh, the shared module to get the folder service, right? So let's start out with the user module. We need that and we also need the shared module which makes sense. Now we have both modules that means that we can go into my component and first of all we're going to need the user service, private user service. There we go, that we have user service and we also need to have a private um, folder service. There we go. Now we have these services available. The next step is pretty much just starting out by getting the user. So we'll say this user service, oh not folder service, user service, dot get user, then we can get the current user right, dot switch map to kind of get the user and we'll use that user inside the switch map because now we have the unique identifier for that user and we can use that unique identifier right here to actually go and grab um, the user ID to kind of use the folder service to actually get our current folder for this user. But to do that, we need the root folder, right? So we have to kind of jump into our user service and see if we're actually using the, the folder. And of course, we are not right now. Now, the reason is, first of all, we don't have a root folder here. Actually, I went and added it earlier because I knew I would need it. So it's actually in here. And now I'm going to go into the user service and just add it right here. So the auth user also has a root folder available. So let's just add that in here and just say that we are getting this from the DB users root folder. And that pretty much just means that now we have the root folder available inside the user we just got from Firebase. And with the root folder ID, we can now, yeah, 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 use this dot user service, uh, folder service dot get folder. And then we can use the users root folder root folder. There we go. So now we have the root folder available. And if we just return, uh, subscribe to this and return all of this right here, we'll just say oh, and return. There we go. So now we can pretty much say subscribe for this and we'll get back a folder right here. And we'll just say subscribe and then we'll get back an actual folder. So we'll get the folder back and that folder is going to be our main folder. So when we have the folder available, all we have to do is kind of just use this folder right here. Boink. That's why I kind of saved this. Let's get rid of this now. We also need to push this to the column when we're getting this folder. Boink. And then let's just shut this down, save all of this. And now we pretty much should have a real live folder from Firebase that should pop up with my name on it, right? There we go. That's the root folder. And if you look at Firebase right now, you'll see that is actually the root folder. So again, we're looking at IQJS something as the ID, IQJS something. And if you look right here, we have a great day an awesome day and a spring 2018. Great day, awesome day as files and spring 2018. So that's it for this lesson. Now we kind of got this in here. Now there are a few things you need to be aware of right now. First of all, if you start adding extra data in here, you will kind of um, end up having an extra folder because we are actually listening right now for changes. So it'll automatically update. We'll use that laser later for great power, but right now it's a mess. So for now, let's just go in and say, as the final thing right here, we're only going to get the folder once and then we'll kind of not subscribe anymore. So adding the first keyword, 
And since we don't have first available right now, let's just jump up here. And what we'll do is we'll just say import and we'll just add rxjs and we'll say slash, operate, uh, sorry, slash add slash operator and slash, there we go, and slash first. That should be it. Now we actually should have this available. If we go down here, there's no error anymore and we're only getting the event once. So we don't listen anymore after the first change. And that pretty much means that when I'm refreshing the page now, it should actually end up showing only the first one. And even though I make changes in the database right now, let's just put this back, there we go. It shouldn't actually update the guy in here because it's not listening anymore. So we're going to use that power of the live reload later, but for now, let's just keep it simple and remove that by adding the first keyword so we only get the event once. That's it for this lesson. See you next time.